how is this gonna work out? <laughs> All right, hey guys, I figured I would do an updated video basically on my thoughts on what it's been like to live here. So I'll probably be recording throughout the day instead of just talking about it all at once because I want to show certain things and um, talk about certain things, but I only have a couple of minutes. I have about 15 minutes before my next meeting with my team lead. So heating has improved. I decided to keep my second radiator. I ordered one radiator and that was definitely not good enough. High ceilings and also my entire living room is surrounded by glass doors so the heat escapes constantly and I bet a lot of the cold gets in too. But um, the past two days, um, the evenings have been definitely more tolerable. I'm able to actually keep my room temperature above 70 degrees. So I've got two radiators running and then I also have the space heater that my landlord provided me running as well, which I do kind of feel a little crappy about. That's a lot of power and energy, but I have to be comfortable and if I don't have all of them running it gets really really chilly in here so the mornings can be difficult because I've been experimenting with what I want my setup to be like and um, if I have two radiators out in the living room um, with a timer to set in the morning so they turn on like an hour or two before I wake up to heat the living room then my bedroom gets pretty cold because if I only use the space heater for my bedroom, it's not good enough and it does get chilly. But the thing is, I feel like the radiators, they're, they need more time to really heat and warm up a room. So even though I had them both turn on, I think an hour before I woke up, it was still cold as hell out here. So for the, maybe like the first hour or two of working, it's not enjoyable to be out, be out here because my feet are cold, I have to wear a jacket, it's just super chilly. Another thing I have definitely learned about living here is just that I would say in the future I would definitely not want to own a place that is lower elevation. So the main road, once you turn off, you pretty much have to drive down and then I reach the main gate of the main house and then I have to drive down even further. That means that the amount of sunshine that I get down here is limited. So right now, um, of course, like by, mm, let's say like nine to 10 a.m., I am starting to get sunshine. And it's not that I get no sunshine, but it just means that by the time the sun is like starting to set, even like maybe let's say an, one to two hours before the sun is about to set, it ends up having no sunlight around here because there's a lot of trees and then there's also hills around me that will block out the sun. So that definitely contributes to my place being colder faster and um, definitely not a fan of that because I love sunshine and then right now um, around like 3.30 to 4, sometimes it feels like the day is over because the sunshine is gone, but then when I drive out, I'm like, oh, it's still plenty of light out. It's just different down here. So definitely not a fan of that. So in my last video, <laughs> I complained about my neighbors. And I do think that at the time when I was thinking all those really anxious thoughts about living around other people, I did acknowledge that I was probably overreacting. And I would say that ever since my last encounter with my neighbor, which I did talk about in my video, I actually have not really seen any of them, which, which makes sense, right? Because people live in their own space. And I would say that if they choose to live in a location like this, they're not exactly the most extroverted people. They probably want to keep to themselves. So I have seen the woman at the end with her German Shepherd walking around the property at night, but that's about it. I haven't actually been able to have conversations with anybody, which is what I want, which is what I'm happy about. Yeah, I do feel like I am settling into a rhythm here and I'm finding my own comfort. Um, later when I go outside, I will show you guys what I've been doing for a little bit of fetch with Riley. I did end up using some of the turf that I had for my last house, which I'm very happy about. Jose at first wanted me to sell them, and I don't mind that, but I, I was thinking, you know, it's California, it might be hard for me to find, 
it might be hard for me to find a place that has like the ideal space and grass to run. So um, like my last house where it had the space but it was covered with rocks, I needed the turf. So here there is a walkway outside and it's like stone, I guess you can call it. So I just added the turf as a little bit of extra padding because I know she likes to jump and catch the ball. And when she lands again, I want her to have like that tiny bit of padding to help. Plus, when she's skidding around, I don't want her nails to be scratching against the stone. So the turf helps a little bit. The space is definitely not as long as I'd like, but I work with what I have. And if we're able to even play it a little bit, that definitely makes me happy. Another thing is going for walks with Riley pretty much mean that I 100% always have to drive out somewhere to take her for a walk because and this is something that I'm starting to come to terms with but I would say most rural communities are not like typical neighborhoods so when I think about the main two places that I was considering living and that I think to myself that I would actually like to buy a house in is probably Alpine or Ramona I would say Ramona more than Alpine, but a lot of those neighborhoods are pretty much houses that lead off main roads. It's not like a main road that turns into like roads that are entirely neighborhoods, if you know what I mean. But yeah, you don't often have sidewalk space to walk your dog is what I mean. And my area is off a main road. And even if I walked her up to that main road, there is a neighborhood very close by that's like full of really nice houses. But I have to walk on the main road for a little bit and there's just very little space that I don't feel comfortable doing that with cars passing by and I don't, yeah, I just don't like the thought of that. But also, I don't see myself enjoying walking her around here anyways. So I don't mind driving her out somewhere to walk. I think the main thing that I would just have to adjust to is the fact that I would only walk her once a day because I think driving her out twice is really tedious for me. That's too much. And that means that for the one walk that we do, I do tend to do it for longer than usual, like maybe 30 to 40 minutes minimum. And then our second instance of exercise could just be us playing fetch outside. That can suck sometimes because there were moments at my last house where I liked just taking her out for a quick walk right after my meeting or just like getting her some exposure. Like it's nice to have that easy access to just walking in a neighborhood where there's not a lot of traffic and there's sidewalks and it's just convenient that way. Okay, so one thing that I do tend to struggle a little bit with right now is that there is no convenient place to park my motorcycle here. So at first when I moved here and I asked her if I could park my motorcycle up top on the pavement, I thought that I was able to park it right next to her garage, which is flat. And when I arrived with my motorcycle, she said that you can't park it there because all of our cars need to get out of the um, garage as well as the garbage truck needing the space to turn around. So she told me to move my bike down to, um, this sloped area next to an RV off to the side and when I moved my motorcycle there I dropped it and obviously dropping your motorcycle is not a very pleasant experience and I was also very very frustrated that day because I can't lift it up by myself when there's moments where I'm unable to do something because of physical um, disadvantages I get really pissed off because I don't like needing to ask for help for stuff like that but anyways um i just don't feel confident parking my bike around here because the area she wants me to park it at i don't like how it works so i can probably like show what it looks like but essentially it's not the most wide area but when i'm going down i have to go downhill and then I have to do a 180 and then park it on the side. So normally 180s are fine, but it's also more stressful when it's at a downhill. And then also the fact that it's not 
very wide. Like a narrow 180 at a downhill, I haven't practiced that very much, so I don't feel confident doing it. And after I already dropped my motorcycle, if I were to try it again and dropped it again, I would, I would be so fucking mad. So I actually have not ridden since then because during my drop, my shift lever dented in because of the impact. And I want to replace that part before I try riding again. And right now the replacement part is on back order. I think it's supposed to arrive at the end of the month or come back in stock at the end of the month. So I'm waiting, but that issue, I'm definitely thinking a little bit more about. I could ride it down here. Originally my hesitation in riding it down here was that the road down, the pavement ends eventually and it turns into dirt and the dirt is bumpy and then there's a turn. I don't know, I, I could always try it because you know, Sometimes I think I underestimate my riding skills, but also I think I get nervous very easily when it comes to handling the bike because of my short stature, my small figure, um, I can't flat foot, so it makes it so that manipulating the motorcycle isn't as easy as other people. So that stuff I still have to deal with. And also just like, I really don't like seeing my motorcycle out. I want it in a garage, that way it's all like protected. Yeah, I guess that was the sacrifice that I made uh, moving out here. And also because it's winter time, it will suck. I will have to go up a bit more often and make sure I start it once in a while so the battery doesn't die. Those were a few things that I thought of when it came to my experience living here so far. But yes, I have my meeting soon. And uh, I'll just talk to you guys throughout the day. Okay, so in this package, I have been looking forward to this package for so many days now and it is a fountain pen. So, a couple months ago, I bought my first ever fountain pen. It was a Monte Verde um, Innova, and it was a limited edition. And I love that pen so much. I, I never realized how much more I would enjoy writing just because of an instrument. And yeah, I, <laughs> I just, feel like I can't use any other pen anymore. I have to write with it. So anyways, one day I was terrible and um, I threw it at the door because Milo was pissing me off <laughs> and the back tip broke off. So I will show you guys after I open which piece came off. But basically I tried to glue it back on with Gorilla Glue and I must have applied too much. And then the glue pretty much kind of like seeped down and you know made other parts not flexible anymore which ruined the pen and I had this one night where I was playing team fight tactics and I was trying to like get this pen to work I was trying to put new ink into the pen that's the only reason that I realized that it was fucked up but yeah I decided to buy the um oh what's this oh I get ink and the sticker yeah for a lot of my writing stuff I tend to buy from gouletpens.com I've always been really happy with the products that I get from them and they send you a Tootsie Pop but I'm not am I gonna eat this maybe maybe it's not the worst thing to eat this anyways it comes with a free ink so I decided to get the color I got was blue suede I guess because I wanted to try like different colors I thought that I got green I mean I guess it is green but it's it says blue suede anyways let's open this because I have been so excited for it I move everything out of the way okay where does this say so Innova 20th anniversary limited edition Monte Verde USA so this pen looks pretty much almost exactly like my other one, the main difference is the accents. So my old one, the accents were rose gold and this one is a rainbow color. So let's see if, ooh. So this is what it looks like. So similar to the last package, it comes with the exact same stuff. It comes with the pen, it comes with an extra bottle of ink and I'm pretty sure it's just black ink and then it comes with a little pin 
of your fountain pen. So I have the old one still, it's in my bedroom. I don't use it for anything. Maybe someday if I'm going to some sort of like event where you can decorate your outfit with pins, I'll wear something like this. This one's pretty. I really like the rainbow on it. Ooh. Okay. So basically what ended up happening is this bit back here Right. So normally this top part, you can't remove it. There's no point in removing it. But after the impact with the door, it came off. So when I went to refill my ink, oh, I forgot that it comes with no ink inside. Oh, that's good, actually, because I've been using my um, wine. Uh, it's like a maroonish color ink, and I've been really enjoying that. I kind of felt like that ink may have flowed smoother than the black one it originally came with but anyways another thing to keep in mind that i almost forgot about is the fact that i decided to order extra fine instead of fine so my last one was fine and it was fine <laughs> but it is a little bit thicker than i would like I tend to write very small, so if it's thick, then it's a little bit annoying because then my letters can kind of like mush together. So hopefully this extra fine works better for me. Another thing that I'm glad to kind of start over with is the fact that I've learned that you don't want to write with the nib directly on a hard surface. So in the past, I wasn't aware of that. So sometimes I would just have one sheet of paper and start writing on the hard surface and that's not good. You want padding. So that shouldn't be a problem for me because I write in notebooks or I write in my memory book. But yeah, I, I have been wanting to write in my memory book. I try to write in it every day or like writing in my notebook, just like writing in general. I have wanted to and I've been waiting for this pen and I'm so happy it's here. It's so beautiful. If you've never tried out a fountain pen, I would really recommend it it will really enhance your writing experience. And I know that sounds so basic and so dumb. You're like, oh, well, first off, you don't have to spend this much. This pen, um, this pen is 70 with shipping, but there's always a bunch of other different kinds of pens that you can get where you will still feel just as satisfied. So I just encourage you to try it out if you have like any enjoyment of writing whatsoever because it's a game changer. All right, hi guys. I am in Blossom Valley. Look how beautiful it is. Soon I will show you the real El Capitan, even though I did show you guys through pictures, but um, I do like hiking around here. I should hike more around here because I feel like these trails are fairly unknown. They don't show up on all trails, which I think is a very popular website that people use to search for trails. So people should only know of this if they are residents or if they're people like me who like to explore. Anyways, it's actually pretty hot today. It's like close to 90 or it is exactly 90 and above. But um, I'm just really surprised how warm it is because this morning at like 9.45, I went out to play a little bit of, let's go. Oh, you're pooping. Oh, sorry, I didn't notice. So that road down there, I've driven through there many times and I used to bike through there a lot. All right, go ahead. Oh, there he is. How magnificent. Oh my God. He's so beautiful. He, she, whatever. El Capitan doesn't have to mean it's a he. God, I love it. I wish I had a view like this every day. Here we go, here we go. Look at all that. All those plants in front. <laughs> Wait, maybe the better view's over here. Oh, more. This. I like this view a lot. Okay, I wanted to show you guys just this outside area really quick. So right now it's 3.30 and this is what I mean. Look, it's already like no sunlight at all down here. So that is the unfortunate part. 
But yeah, I'd say this like length of area isn't bad. So I set up, these benches were originally here in the first place, but I just kind of like flipped them over so it could provide a bit of a blockade. Um, and then I stacked the rest over here to have another bit of a cushion. And then over there, I put the turf like that because there's like a pipe sticking up out of the ground that's fucking dangerous. And that's kind of what I don't like about this. Like, look, there's a fucking big ass hole there. The ball has gone in there a few times. And luckily there's a shovel out here that I used to fetch it out. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to work with what I have. It's just definitely far too muddy over there. It's always moist. So anyways, we just finished our hike and now we come back home and go inside. It's, we're tired.